Hello and welcome to Defund the BBC. My name is Calvin Robinson and joining me this week is a journalist who currently writes for the Sunday Times, The Sun, The Spectator. Uh, previously, he's worked as the editor of Radio 4's Today programme and also has authored a number of successful political books, one of which was The Great Betrayal, a book which looks at the establishment's attempts to derail Brexit and attack democracy. I am, of course, talking about my good friend Rod Little. Rod, thank you for joining us. A pleasure, Calvin. An absolute pleasure, mate. So let's get into the BBC, because BBC News has been fear-mongering about a third wave here in the UK when we have a population of 67 million people and zero people die. Running a story titled Third Wave as your lead is just plain bad, lazy and inaccurate journalism, isn't it? Wouldn't you agree? I think it probably is. Uh, I think the BBC actually had a good first four months of the pandemic and rather rescued themselves from... Uh, the oblivion which they seem to be in prior to COVID. Uh, but since then, they have become more and more censorious of any view which diverges from the views of a very narrow number of epidemiologists. Uh, and I think that's a problem. And some quite shocking things have happened, such as people who don't agree with lockdown or think that lockdown is of, of limited e efficacy. Uh, uh, they have agreed in advance with members of the SAGE team that they will not be given equal time as people in SAGE. All, all of this stuff is absolutely the BBC back to doing what one had rather hoped it had given up doing, which is being biased uh, all the way down the line. Well, I think that goes against the interests of the public. And, you know, obviously at, at the defund the BBC, we're focusing on efforts of uh, securing and winning a referendum to scrap the licence fee entirely. Do you think that would help in the public mood? What do you think uh, the surrounding result would be? I think there's still a reservoir of support for the BBC. And I, you know, as a social democrat, I look at the, at the idea, the notion of a national broadcaster, which can bring the country together with a sense of tradition and a sense of history uh, as being a good thing. But, but that, that support winnows away every single year with every single year that the BBC is in existence and seems to despise and look down upon the vast majority of people who pay its license fee, much in the same way that the Labour Party does for the people it was set up to support. Um, so I think right now, if you, took a, if, you took a, if you took a poll, I think it would be pretty close to 50-50, given another two years probably 60-40. It depends what the new Director General could do about it. He seems to be a decent bloke and he seems to have the right priorities for the BBC, but still the BBC is continuing. You know, it, it, it is such an enormous beer moss to turn around uh, and to try and inculcate a sense of humility, of decency and of representationalism to the people who pay for it. Yeah, and you mentioned, you know, the BBC looked down on the public. I think it's even worse than that. I think the BBC has become infamous for threatening the public. So they send these threatening emails to residents about the licence fee, saying, unless you call us, our investigation will, you know, escalate. Emails which target people which don't even watch live TV. What do you make of that behaviour from the BBC? Well, it's, it's doubly, it's doubly heavy-handed. Firstly, they are still prosecuting people as far as they possibly can for not paying the license fee regardless of whether they ever watched the television uh, and at the same time resisted uh, subsidized uh, 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 license fees for people over the age of 75 who are probably the majority of people in the country who watch the BBC uh, these days they they always get the public mood wrong they always get the public mood wrong and the reason they get the public mood wrong is that they're in a bubble over there uh, and that uh, they don't think they're biased. They don't think they're being nasty to the pensioners, and they don't think it's wrong that people should be hauled before the courts to explain why they're not paying their license fee. Because they're surrounded by people who think identically to them. It is a monocultural institution, and that is its biggest problem. And it is very difficult to see how you can deal with that. I entirely agree. And of course, you mentioned the pensioners there. So Lord Botham has said that pensioners are now growing in confidence that the BBC won't prosecute them over non-payment of the licence fee. Do you think the BBC's moral force is empty and are these threats now just becoming meaningless pieces of paper? Uh, possibly they have become that. I think, I think the problem the BBC now has is that I think it is beginning to realise that, that it got this battle wrong. It also faces having decriminalisation of the licence fee uh, uh, taken away from it, uh, uh, of not paying the licence fee, is that the government was very seriously thinking about doing this back in February 2020, just before the virus struck. 
at that point in February 2020, the BBC looked like it was game up. I think if you'd had your referendum then, um, or, 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 or there had been a general vote on the BBC, I think it could have swept through. Uh, you'd had a director general resign, you had the, the, uh, uh, the editor of the Today programme resign, and you had a government in which was determined to hold the BBC to account. But the BBC, for obvious reasons, has rather dropped down the government's agenda. I hope that the, that the government will impinge upon the BBC and say, no, it is no longer a criminal offence for someone not to pay their licence fee. Entirely agreed with you there. And uh, th this week we saw David Mitchell, he leapt to the BBC's defence over the Bashir scandal, praising the corporation comedy, drama and documentary output as the real reason people watch or pay for the licence fee. Bit odd though, don't you think, how he fails to pick up on the wokery, the bias and the criminalisation for non-payment of the fee? Well, on the wokery, it's not odd at all because he's woke. He's... <laughs> <laughs> as woke as you could possibly be, and of course it's very self-serving because he is one of the uh, one of the left-wing comedians who's done very well out of the BBC. I think th the only comedians the BBC employs are left-wing, and all left-wing comedians are at some point employed by the BBC, <laughs> and the vast majority of them, Mitchell, to be fair, accepted, aren't funny. Uh, you know, it's it's a it's 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 absurd. I think. I think actually the problem with the BBC now, far more than news, which David Mitchell described as being boring, um, it is the comedy programmes and the dramas which most get people's goats. Those are the those are the things which which most annoy them, such as when they do a um, uh, a new version of Watership Down, in which there's a transgender rabbit, and the the, fe the female rabbits are empowered and and keen together for feminism. I, you know, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, they should make this stuff up rather than redoing old classics and trying to make them woke. They should try and, instead of riding on the back of brilliant stories, they should write their own stories if that's what they want to do about transgender rabbits. You know, I'm sure someone would watch a programme about transgender rabbits. I mean, I wouldn't, but whatever. Absolutely. In regards to the, the comedy, I think they think that we're snowflakes on anyone that's, you know, slightly right of centre, but it's not that I'm offended by the left wing comedy. It's just not funny. That's the problem with it. No, no, that, that's, that is one of the problems. They don't get what is funny. And I don't think this is a left wing thing, particularly, because, you know, I, I know a few... Stuart Lee is a left wing comedian, a very left wing comedian, and I think he can be very, very funny indeed and very clever. Uh, all they have to do is pick people if they are funny, not because they're black or Muslim or left wing, yes. just because they're funny. That's what you should be doing. And I, I, but they got into this terrible thing, which I noticed when I was there. It was already well in 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 its in its in, in flow, flowing when I was there, which is this quota thing that everything has to be done by quotas. Um, and you, you Calvin, you, you Calvin, know just how hopeless that ends up and how parodic. Yeah, it just be breeds resentment and it's patronising, yeah. if not racist. Yeah. There's no need for quotas when we have meritocracy in this country. It's ridiculous. Well, exactly. I mean, that's the other thing in that in that the BBC, it is still racist. It is still racist. It will flood uh, the screens with black faces, um, uh, sometimes simply for the case of putting a black face on. And yet you try and find me uh, a black editor, a black manager, a black boss. Uh, it's it's the same now as it was when I was at the BBC. Uh, the, it, it's the typical liberal patronising thing. Well, we're looking after you, and, and we like to look at you, but you're not going to tell us what to do, and we're not having you in positions of power. Absolutely. We'll, we'll help you out from down there. <laughs> we'll help you out, you, you little people. That's it. It's, it's appalling, appalling. Well, let's talk about something a little bit more serious, because the BBC has done a pretty dreadful job of reporting on the conflict between Hamas and Israel, with numerous examples of bias and one-sided emotive reporting. As a former BBC editor, um, do you think middle, the BBC's Middle East editor, Jeremy Bowen, is responsible for this? And if so, should he be removed? I don't know if Jeremy is responsible for it. Uh, <laughs> it it's, <laughs> I'm really sorry. If you look at every single correspondent they have had out there, uh, and I can't remember all the names, there was the one who actually cried on air when Yasser Arafat died. Uh, that was a that was a landmark of neutral journalism uh, for crying for a terrorist. Uh, every single one of them has 
adopted the BBC. It's not a left-wing bias. It's a, it's, it's a kind of liberal bias in that they support Palestine because they think Palestine's small and Israel's big, therefore Palestine's right and Israel's wrong. And of course, they also sign up to the, the general hatred of Israel, which is shown by uh, the left in this country, uh, which, in my opinion, is evidence really of anti-Semitism. Mm. It is now two weeks we're talking, Calvin, mate, since uh, the BBC said it was going to investigate a Palestinian journalist who works for the corporation called Tala, I've forgotten her surname, yeah. uh, but Tala was her first name, uh, who had tweeted that Hitler was right, which I think is probably a controversial statement and not one necessarily uh, that the population would agree with, and also that uh, Israel was more Nazi than Hitler. Um, they said that they were going to investigate this. This is two weeks ago. Danny Baker was sacked within eight seconds. You know, why is this woman still employed? And then you look at the BBC Arabic service, which should be called the BBC Arabist service. It is relentlessly biased. And they make no... It's, it's like SOAS. It's like all these institutions. They make no attempt to apologise for it. The, the idea that the BBC is neutral on Israel is, is an absurdity. The Israelis know it, we know it, and I suspect Hamas knows it. Well, it's because anti-Semitism is, is the approved racism, isn't it? It's an okay, acceptable yes, form right. of racism. That's right. Everyone likes a bit of racism. And if we can't be nasty to black and Asian people, at least we can be nasty to the Jews, I think is yeah. the yeah. way that the, the liberals look at this. It, it, it's appalling. And it is, a, it is a form of racism, which exactly as you say, Calvin, uh, is, is, is now acceptable uh, amongst, uh, amongst the dinner parties of Kensal Rise and Notting Hill. Disgusting. Well, anyway, Rod, it's been a fascinating conversation. Thank you so much for coming on and thank you for your time. It's a pleasure and uh, all part of your good works, Calvin, mate. Cheers.